And here we are. Happy Wednesday. Hello. Hey, Charlie. Great to see you. Happy Wednesday to everybody out there on this third day of November 2021. Another enormous day uh, for Canadian soccer here as we get set to preview tonight's Canadian Championship semi-final at BMO Field, uh, live on One Soccer from 7, uh, kickoff just after 7.30. We'll be all over it here as well at the Canadian Premier League. Um, Toronto FC taking on Pacific uh, just 24 hours after Forge qualified for the CONCACAF Champions League. Charlie, good time to talk Canadian soccer with you as usual. Is it ever? <laughs> Is it ever? We've got some great guests coming up. We've got Justin Morrow uh, as he gets the, gets the really, you know, pulled down the curtain, I suppose, on what is a fantastic career and, and get to talk to him about tonight's match as well. Palmer Ducar, the coach for Pacific, will join us as well. And later, Cal Becker after last night's glorious, absolutely glorious uh, night in Hamilton. Uh, please put your comments down on here. We'll get to some questions for you as well and an action-packed, busy hour. But Charlie, initially, uh, how are you feeling this morning after a good night last night? I feel great. I still am not quite sure I, I can believe that Forge pulled that off. Because it really was remarkable. I have to be honest, I wasn't feeling particularly confident going into that game. I thought maybe they could they could pull out the 1-0 or something like that. 2-1 was kind of the, the scoreline I was leaning at. And then maybe we'd wait until later in the night to see what happened in the other games to see if they got into the Champions League. But they had none of that. They weren't interested in watching other games. They weren't interested in, in looking at the tables. None of that nonsense. They qualified for the Champions League immediately. <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> they... they, they spared us mercifully from having to do any kind of math or right. permutations or anything. Uh, so I thank them for that. And it, it, it really just was another incredible night from Forge who, you know, seemed to produce a lot of them at the moment. Yeah. As Jeffrey said, they did the thing. They actually did the thing. <laughs> they, did. Uh, they absolutely did. Uh, yeah. We'll get more into Forge's fantastic victory last night. Uh, later in the show, as we mentioned, great to have Cal Becker will be joining us as well tonight. Uh, we have the second semi-final. Forge lost narrowly last week on the game that we previewed on this very show last week uh, on penalties in probably the most heartbreaking fashion you could ever do, getting to the 11th goal take and the goalkeepers taking him at that point. Uh, tonight, we may have a close game as well. We don't know what we're going to get. Toronto FC, um, and we're going to get into this with Justin Moore in a second. They are not shying away from the size of this match, Charlie no. O'Connor Clark. Uh, Richie Larea said yesterday, I think he called it a massive game. Many players, including him, rested over the weekend. Uh, this is their, what is this? This is their, their, their season, I suppose, in terms of playing for Absolutely a competition. Absolutely it is. Absolutely it is. I mean, they've been kind of out of the playoff race in MLS for a little bit now. I think they've only got one league game left after this one coming up this weekend. The Canadian Championship for TFC is, in in many ways, kind of an expectation, right? Because they've won it more than anybody. It's generally a disappointment if they don't come away with the trophy from a year, right? Yeah, totally. And at at this point, you know, it's it's been a very frustrating season for that club, and it, it's there's been a lot of a lot of difficult times. Obviously, it started in in such difficult fashion, having to play away from home and and so on. I. Uh, you know they they will definitely have their eyes on still ending it with a trophy. You know you still get to end a season with some silver on a high note because uh, that final will come after their their regular season is over. So this is a massive game for TFC as well as Pacific. Yeah, no question about it. Look, Toronto FC, as you alluded to, have not had a great year. Uh, although they are saying um, that things are well, you know, I think the coach said yesterday, Javier Perez said that it almost feels like they're starting now. If they started in this mindset and mm -hmm. this tactical way and they're getting fit, they're in a good headspace right now collectively. We'll get to Justin Morrow's take on that shortly. But they don't have much money going left. No. <laughs> they, have, they literally have this game and then a game on the weekend against DC United to wrap up their MLS season and then potentially a final. So not a lot of games left for them to what has been obviously a dismal 2021, no question about it for them. But as you alluded to, it is still a proud franchise um, and there's not an arrogance about it. There's just a simple expectation that they should be lifting this competition every year. Yeah. And the last time they tried to do that, again, narrowly lost on penalties to, I suppose, the, the penalty shootout kings of Canada right now uh, in CF Montreal slash Impact. So. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so you know they have not had that chance to lift that competition. And, and also, again, a gift to get to the CONCACAF Champions League where... It has to be said, Toronto FC, again, believe, Charlie, they should be in. And even though it was way back many months ago now, six months plus, 
was the highlight of their season in terms of how they performed earlier this season against the likes yeah. of Club Leon. Yeah, that seems so long ago, doesn't it? I think it was, when was that, April or, or May? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. April, yeah. 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 Very, very early in the season, and it you know sparked a lot of optimism that ultimately maybe wasn't fulfilled in, in the actual MLS season. But yeah, TFC, you know, we talked about Forge and how much they love playing in continental football. TFC are the same way, right? right? They have quite a, a strong recent history in the Champions League. Obviously, they were in the final in 2018, and, and this year they did they did well again beating another Mexican team. They also just want these cracks at these teams that are very difficult to play against, just like the CPL teams want to play the MLS teams. The MLS teams want to play the Liga MX teams, right? Right. Because these Mexican teams are the top ones in the continent, in the region, and it, it's always the kind of game that you really want. And TFC are a club that really pride themselves on on playing that continental football. And I, I know that everybody at the club from, from management and right on down has said many times in the past that they want to win the CONCACAF Champions League one day. And that obviously starts with getting there. Yeah, no doubt. That's the storyline from Toronto FC's point of view. From Pacific, if you're joining us, good morning on the West Coast in what is a, a truly another monumental match for your franchise and for your organization. And what a run you've already had. You know, we have to remember that this season already beat the Whitecaps, beat Cavalry. And now here we go again, our third leg for you. Um, you know, I think the storyline is that they are amongst, if not the best, a, a, a attacking team in our in, in the Canadian Premier League, they'll feel like that with their attacking talent, the likes of Heard and Bustos, uh, and Diaz and others, and the midfield trio that they're going to play, they can score goals tonight. I think they'll feel mm -hmm. that confident. We'll get into that with Palmer Ducar. But the other key storyline, and probably the biggest storyline, is their undisputed best player is here and he's fit and he's ready. And he was again marvelous in his conversation with you yesterday. Please go nice. check this campl.ca. Charlie's brilliant write up on Marco Bustos and a good 20 minute chat where Marco again opened his heart to us and talked about his journey from getting hurt in August to getting ready and having to watch that game against the White Caps and not being able to play and being emotional about it, Charlie. Just a, a, a fascinating insight to the against the mindset of Marco heading into this match tonight. Yeah, he was incredibly candid as always in that interview. Because obviously it would hurt a lot to be looking at that game against the Whitecaps, his former club, for so long. And then all of a sudden, you know, the week before, you're hurt and you can't do it. And you're out for two months. So it's definitely been a very challenging process for him to go from being such a high and, and probably being the front runner for league MVP at that time. And, and you know, probably still a candidate. But go, to go from there to get injured and then to have to work your way back. You know, it's it's quite impressive that he has managed to come back and, and instantly be himself again. And that's a massive, massive boost for Pacific in this game. Yeah, to be himself is key, no? I mean, yeah. you, you get the feeling that this is a game, you know, that he thought about for some time, right? To 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 to, to circle on the calendar and to go out there and play and, and to play against top class players. That's what Marco Bustos has talked to you about as well. Yeah. Uh playing against legit stars in the league. Uh and they don't really get any better uh, than our next guest, who's a legit star on and off the pitch. Let's throw him in. Um, arguably one of the best human beings you're ever going to come across. Here he is. Uh, Justin Morrow's with us, joining us on the show on match day, which we can't thank him enough as well. Justin, good afternoon. How are you? Hey, good afternoon, guys. How are you guys doing? Yeah, we're doing great. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. And I know it's on short notice. And again, the games tonight, this is a big moment for you as well. Uh, great to see so many people complimenting in the comments about getting you on the show. Um, how are you feeling heading into tonight? Obviously, I know things are probably a bit more emotional for you now coming down the stretch in terms of it being your last season. But how big is this for you tonight and for the team? Yeah, very big. I mean, it's, it's hard to put into words for a guy like me. It's my last week. And if we don't win, then it's definitely my last week. So I'm trying to to soak it up as, as much as possible, but also bring that competitive edge that we've brought for so many years and the experience that we've brought into this tournament for so many years and, and help on a night like tonight. Yeah, Justin, again, thanks for, for joining us on game day here. I mean, as you alluded to there, for anybody who don't know does or doesn't know, you announced earlier this year that this is going to be your last as a professional soccer player. So, you know, obviously it's been a tougher season for you guys for TFC as a club, but what would it mean? I mean, especially to you personally to end it on a high note, to lift a trophy at the end of this year. It would be special just because of the way the year has gone. Um, mm -hmm. I, 
I've talked a little bit about it, but I decided that this was going to be my last year yeah. in the off season last year, you know, figuring out if I was going to move the family, go to a different city or whatnot. Um, and never really expected a year like we've had, you know, we, we had shown up until that point that we were a top team league. Um, albeit it was a pandemic year. We had a good year last year, you know, with, with some strong results, uh, was very close to winning supporter shield. So I'm thinking, okay, we're coming back. Um, we're going to have every chance to fight for more trophies. And that hasn't been the case this year. So to have one last chance to fight for another trophy and, and on somewhat of a positive note would be really special for a guy like me. And Justin, what does that do for you in terms of when you're now reflecting? I know players take one game at a time and then suddenly some players will say in their careers, you know, you win the trophy, but you're always thinking about the next one, right? Now, I would imagine you're probably in that reflective time a little bit, even though you're still playing. Do you find yourself thinking more and more about those moments about lifting the trophies than you do about the actual games? Is that, are, those the, are those the significant positive reference points that you look back on as your career? Absolutely. It's just a it's just a different reference point. You know, we were in Atlanta this past weekend and being my my last MLS road trip. And I was just trying to soak all of that in and being with the guys and knowing that I'm going to miss that so much. So these moments, they only come every so often a chance to fight for a trophy, to fight for one 90 minutes where everything's on the line. You know, so I'm just trying to to enjoy that for this one last time. With the Canadian Championship specifically, I mean, Justin, you you obviously weren't born in Canada, but you've played here for, I think, six years now in Toronto, and you've won this tournament, I think, three times. Just what has it come to mean to you just to be playing in this country and to, to be, you know, fighting for, for that title of being the champions of this country in that tournament? Yeah, it's it's eight years now. This is my eighth year. Eight. I'm the, I, they've adopted me over here, all of my young kids teammates keep me as they should <laughs> <laughs> so i appreciate that and it's it's been a fun time competing in this tournament to see um the soccer landscape here in canada grow so much over the years to see how well the national team is doing now it's all very exciting and i think this tournament plays into that to now have expanded out to the canadian premier league and to face this competition for for the first time is really exciting. Um, I, I've been really pleased to see the players that have come through the system, to see the Canadian Premier League growing. And I think for all the fans out there, this is a really exciting matchup tonight. You mentioned the Canadian Premier League. I, I know you're probably not a chance to see too much of it because you're playing a lot of the games when they're actually on as well. Uh, but maybe just in just a question and a follow up on that about the landscape about Canadian players, because you've got a bunch of young Canadian players you'll be playing with tonight uh, that have come through and have, have really been a shining moment for a lot of your year. But what are you seeing in, the, in terms of the overall quality and talent for Canadian players now? both coming through the CPL and also with it with within your own TFC that you maybe didn't see even seven or eight years ago? I think there's just more of it. You know, I think that these larger opportunities has given them a chance to be able to play and develop a little bit more. And so especially for the crop that you see in Toronto FC right now, that's starting to get, you know, real minutes. Um, they've been around for, for a couple of years now. And so to have that under their belt, where those chances weren't there before, I think has really, really changed the outcome for the national team and for the for the country as a whole when you're talking about soccer. And I, th I think that just trickles from the top all the way down. And so it's it's a really exciting time for Canadian soccer as a as an American that's been in this country playing in this country for a number of years now. It's really cool to see. And I, I get so excited when I watch the Canadian national team. I said before that I cheer for them every time as long as they're not playing the United States <laughs> national team. That's fair. <laughs> but it's 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 all really positive and it's it's going really well. And I think that the best is yet to come for Canadian soccer. You know, just speaking of those young players, especially at TFC, obviously Justin, you're a veteran player on the team, you're very experienced and one of the leaders in this group. Just seeing these younger players come through in a squad and, and seeing how much it's been changing over the years what's this been like for you just you know watching these generations of younger players start to start to get their feet wet in mls just what do you do as a as a you know a leader on the team and, and talk to them um <laughs> I, I and the other veterans on the team tried to just be their big brother you know and i think one of the biggest things that 
we've imparted on them being at Toronto FC is like, this is a big club. And there are things that you get here that you can't find in anywhere else in the world. And they don't know that because they haven't been to all these different places. But really, truly, it's a special place that gives you every opportunity to be your best. And we try and help them understand that. And it's been really cool because last year during the pandemic, when we were down in Hartford, they were they were around every single day. So they, they kind of got the beginning of a, of a taste of what it was like to be at this level. And then again, this year being down in Florida, living away from their families, I think really that that makes them mature a little bit. And so really just more than anything, more than the tactical stuff, the technical stuff on the field, it's just, you know, putting the arm around these guys sometimes and say, you know, this is you have you have everything at your feet. You have to take advantage of it. This is the way you grow up. This is the way you handle yourself. And so for that way, it's it's been very rewarding to see them take steps forward. And I think the veterans in the locker room have done a very good job to help them do that. Yeah, well said. Some great comments coming in. For Justin David says, congratulations on a great career. Uh, Adrian says, we will never forget your hat trick. Corey Brady calls you a TFC legend, and rightfully so as well. Um, Aaron Miller asks you a good question, Justin. I'll throw this at you. What will you miss the most about leaving the pitch? Was it the walkout, the locker room banter, the roar of the crowd? Have you started to think about that yet? What are you going to miss the most? Yeah, I was thinking about that this past weekend. It's going to be teammates, teammates more than anything. I love, I love the big nights, the nights like tonight where everything is on the line. Um, I love playing in big stadiums. I love just playing the game. But the thing that I'll miss most is being a part of a team every day and going into a locker room and fighting with my brothers towards something. You know, I, I think that's very hard to replicate and. I will try to do that and try to find that in other ways. But this past 12 years and, and beyond when I was playing club soccer, it's it's something special and it's something that I'll hold in my heart forever. Let me just follow up, Charlie, quickly. Sorry yeah. on that. On that point about teammates, Justin, I'm sure you've been, I'm not going to get into this, but I'm sure you've been on some teams that have been way more special than others, right? Sometimes it's just the na nature of human beings. You get along. But I'm sure you, knowing you a little bit, you will not have taken for granted the relationships that you formed on Definitely. this team, right? Because that doesn't come just because you play 12 years of professional football or soccer doesn't naturally come. Sure. But that I say, I would say that that's something that you hold pretty close to your heart that is that is special and, is, can, and can be unique to certain teams. Yeah, I think the uh, I was thinking about this too. I think the the special thing when it comes is having a group that can say what's on their mind and and truly go through a fight like a family goes through a fight. Go, you know, like brothers might fight with each other and you say everything and those moments things are getting put on the line, they're getting put out there and nothing is being swept under the rug and that's what makes you a better team. And yeah, you get heated in the moment. You might have a verbal altercation, sometimes even physical altercation, but then the next day you're you're back at it and you're all the better for it. And I think being on teams that have done that is is truly a special thing because, like you said, guys can go throughout their career. Um, being a professional where guys' minds are in different places, everyone's on the pitch for a different reason, um, where they don't get that experience, where they don't get that full buy-in. And I've been on some teams that have had that, and that's what really makes – a team special something i'm just wondering kind of in the same vein here obviously justin you mentioned the bonds you've made with some of these tfc teammates you guys have had a lot of special moments in your time here right you've done some pretty cool things i i just don't know if there's anything that you think is going to stick with you the most from all the things you've accomplished any any memories that you think are going to be your favorite when you look back on this time a few years from now I think like from the moments on the field, yeah, the the moments where everything was going well, I'll remember those, but I'll remember just as much the moments where we really had to, to fight. I'm, I'm thinking of the conference final in 2016 where, you know, things were back and forth. I'm thinking of a lot of the playoff series in 2017. I mean, with Columbus, it was it was zero zero for a long time and everything was in the balance um, with New York Red Bulls at home after the halftime altercation. You know, Seba wasn't on the pitch. Josie wasn't on the pitch. And we're just battling. We're straight out battling. And that was a much different team than you had seen throughout the season in 2017. And that was like pulling a different tool out of our tool belt and saying, OK, we can get it done this way, too. 
And I'll just remember those moments. You know, Alex Bono makes that incredible save to, to keep us in it. Uh, yeah. He's one on one with Bradley Wright Phillips at that moment. And, and I mean, those are the things that I'll remember because if you don't go through those struggles, then you don't get to the top. And I think that we were able to get through those places very well. You had some really phenomenal players. Uh, I'll just say this as someone who covered that team very closely. Another key to ingredient of being success is having some really good humans. Uh, and you, my friend, are right at the very top of that list. Uh, Jeffrey adds in the chat, congrats on a great career. Can't wait to watch you make this world a better place. And that is so true uh, because... That you know, we're all excited to see what's next for you. I don't, I don't know, you know, I'm sure you don't want to give too much away, but you've already accomplished a lot of things away from the pitch while you're playing. Um, yeah. with with obviously the things that are going yeah. on, is executive director for Black Players for Change and all of this stuff, and all of that stuff that we you've, you've, you're at the forefront of, and we are incredibly proud of you and open to have those discussions more and more with you. But maybe you can just give us an inclination about what's what, what maybe can be accomplished now that you won't be playing. Yeah, I mean, I haven't. I haven't gotten it all sorted out yet, but I know that I'm going to take the experience that I've had on the field playing soccer, playing for successful teams, take the experience that I've had off the field with black players for change, becoming a leader in that space, you know, really collecting a group of guys and moving them forward towards one common goal and kind of meld those two, you know, and I'm going to do some studying and I'm, I'm going to be working as well. And once I get it all figured out, I'll, I'll tell everybody. But I think that a lot of good things are going to be to come. Yeah, it's definitely been very impressive and, and inspiring kind of watching the work that that you and, and the rest of the guys in that group have been doing over the last little while. Thank you. But, you know, before before you can kind of get get into that fully, you've got a couple more soccer games left here to play, right? Yep. Just, I don't know, how, how do you maybe take these games? Is it, is it just kind of, trying to to enjoy these these last couple of moments you're going to spend on a football pitch what's this going to be like for you yeah definitely enjoying it you know these two games that i know that i have left are going to be at bimo mm -hmm. and so to be in front of our fans again for the last two times um potentially the last two times is, is i soak in every moment of it and then to have a, a massively competitive match tonight is going to be important pacific you know, they're no pushover. They're coming in here to really knock us off our perch. They're really trying to to put themselves on the map in terms of Canadian soccer, and they're a good team. So we can't, you know, we can't take that for granted for one second. And so I, I just try and be a guy that, that keeps on harping on that. And then Sunday is a whole different animal because I'll have my, my friends and my family and we'll be celebrating and whatnot. But I can't even, I can't even think about that until we get through tonight, you know. Yeah, no doubt about it. Get get there on Sunday if you're a TFC fan and celebrate yeah. this man uh, because he deserves it. Last couple of questions from from us, and again, thanks so much for your time on Match Day. It's really really special to get it. Um, our next guest coming up in five minutes is Palmer Dukar, uh, the coach of Pacific, and who is an inspirational character on and off the pitch. I've had many hours of conversation with him. I call him a friend. I'm proud to do that. Uh, but he's also a black man in a coaching position where there aren't as many of those, Justin. How important is it that what the, the, uh, the trail that Pa continues to blaze through here and how we can continue to support that and get more of people who look like Pa in roles where he currently is? Yeah, so important. I, I played against him a number of years in Portland and then Vancouver for a little bit. Um, great competitor, like you said, great, great person, um, knows his stuff. I think he's shown his worth and Pacific and looking forward to having a great battle with him tonight. But but having people in those positions is so important. And I think the Canadian Premier League is, is doing a great job of that and creating more opportunities, not for only players, but also for coaches to increase this pathway, like you're saying, to, to find their way to the top levels of the game. Um, it's not it's not something that's coming easily for the for the minorities in, in this community, but it's something that we're we're continuing to push the walls on because for us, you know, the more diverse our our coaches are, the more diverse our players are, the better it is for the game as a whole, the more reflective it is of our community. Um, and we think that it just it makes everything better. And so for us, it's something that we're going to continue to push on. Yeah, no better place to end that conversation, I don't think, with you than that. That's the most important part. And as I said yeah. to you many times, on and off the pitch and away from the camera, or when it, we're here for you. Anytime you want to talk more about that stuff, I can't wait to see you down there tonight. And again, on game day for spending some time with us. We really appreciate your time. It's been great. 
Beautiful. Thank you, guys. All the best, Justin. Have a great week. Take care of yourself. That's the fantastic Justin Morrow, key defender for Toronto FC and uh, overall just an incredible human being, Charlie. Absolutely. Absolutely. On on and off the pitch, you know, he's always been a really special player that that has always been a fan favorite pretty much everywhere he's been. And we've especially seen it over the last, I don't know, year and a half, two years with, with what he's been doing with the Black Players for Change and that sort of thing that he he really is an inspiration. And, you know, once he's finished playing as a footballer, I'm sure he's going to continue to make maybe an even bigger impact. Yeah, I didn't get into it with him there because it, I know he's not a big fan of talking about himself. But the- <laughs> I'm not sure if it's me or KJ that's frozen there, but uh... <laughs> all right, oh, there you are. KJ's back. Sorry about that. Here sorry about that. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. I lost a wire in the house, maybe. I was saying, Charlie, <laughs> that it's a selfless decision from him because, yeah. you know, he, he very easily could have said, I can carry on playing. You know, he's an athletic guy. He's not old. He's not in his late 30s. Do you know what I'm saying? And so yeah. he made that decision because he knows he's got a lot of work to do off the pitch that he wants to, you know, really focus on. Yeah, absolutely. And you definitely... I think we're back. <laughs> anyway, anyway, that for everybody um, watching. Yeah, we're back. Yeah, yes. we were we were talking about about Justin and you know making this decision to leave the playing pitch to focus on on what he wants to do outside of the game or not necessarily outside of the game but outside of a kit without right. without football boots on, right? Yeah, and it is it is just incredible the things that he's already been able to do, as you mentioned, while also being a full time professional athlete. And I think that it really shows it's a testament to who Justin is as a man and as a person, just that he's made this choice. Cause I think he certainly could have continued playing. He could have found contracts anywhere, even, even stayed in Toronto if he'd wanted, but right. This is the choice he's made and it it's, it's an impressive one and, and you have to respect it. Glad our internet connections are entertaining everybody in the chat, by the way. <laughs> Lots of people asking for Charlie yeah. to take over and entertain us. And Aaron asking if our Bene- if our uh, uh, internet is the same as Benedict. So Benedict, <laughs> Benedict is also in the chat and uh, is the only one right now to talk about the Braves. So he's always been my favorite. Uh, yeah. So yeah, every credit's a bet for Benedict there. Uh, would Freddie Freeman be a better soccer player than Justin Murrow would be a better baseball player? Well, I think Freeman would make a big tall number nine. He'd target man. Freddie Freeman, uh, yeah, I could see that. Stick him up in the box, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that that would be pretty good. But thankfully, we're back online and we're, and everything's going well. Just a great yeah. chat with uh, with J Mo, though. You know, you know, yeah. this as I said, just a great human being. Uh, excited now to get Palmer Ducar on the show, and this is going to be a fascinating chat because this is uh, this is one of our favorites. No, Charlie, like one of our favorites oh, yeah. to interview. Always pretty, I think, intelligent but candid in terms of what he can say in our league. And as I said. Uh, for many different reasons, just we're, we're a benefit to have Palmer Ducar in our league right now. Absolutely, absolutely. Paz, I mean, certainly a very good football coach and a very good person, but also, you know, from our perspective, whenever we chat to him, it's a lot of fun because Paz, Paz is a straight shooter and he will tell you, he'll tell you how it is. He's never afraid to, you know, say something, say something a little bit edgier. He's never afraid to you know speak his mind and that's been a lot of fun over the past couple of years just getting to know him and speaking to him within the league what's impressed you the most about pacific this season because obviously they had a difficult result on the weekend even though some of the officiating probably didn't necessarily go against the they get against their way they could have had a penalty and been up two nil against 10 men and in the end york came back but yeah they have an explosive um attack no in terms of i think you know probably in the, the best attack in the Canadian Premier League. I think that's I think that's pretty pretty fair to say, even though Forge have got some talented players. Would, would you say after 26, yeah. 27 games of evidence that that's pretty clear? 
Yeah, I think so. And the best, but also maybe the most well-defined attack in the league, because they're they've tip- they're typically pretty pretty standard with the way that they go about things. They've got that front three. They've got five, maybe six players that can rotate through it, but it's generally pretty consistent. Uh, and you know, when they have those games where they're on, where they're switched on, and everybody's up for it, they're really isn't much more entertaining football played in the entire CPL than that that Forge does. We saw them obviously tear apart FC Edmonton last week with that five run right. win. And that was I think Boost Marco Bustos' first start back from injury. And it was really a, a special moment for them. But to answer the original question, the thing that actually has impressed me most about Pacific this year, because the the attack was really good last year as well. But what's impressed me this year is the depth that they've managed to find. Right. Because they didn't have that last year. And in many ways, that's maybe the reason they didn't end up in the, in the CPL final last year, or they, they were, I mean, eliminated by their last rat, their last game of that playoff round because they, they really didn't have the depth. They didn't have those players that could step up, you know, when called on or, or rotate through a squad or, or take on a role at a, in a starting position if they needed to. But this year they have had those kinds of players you know, Manny Aparicio has come in and, and been incredible for them. Ali Bassett, even Josh Hurd, who was there last year, has really stepped up in maybe a different way this year, especially yep. when Bustos has been out. And he's been really impressive to me. Just there's been so many players with Pacific that have embraced their roles and been able to come in when needed. Everybody's kind of done their job and, and stepped up when called upon. Yeah, and Palmer Ducar has obviously been a massive part of that, right? I think he yeah. allows individuals to play and flourish the way they need to be. They look like a team who plays for each other. Uh, and they also they look like a team that doesn't look like they need to continue to prove them, uh, who they are to their coach. You know, they're all very comfortable in their own skin, uh, which I think is really important. And as you alluded to, you know, the depth that they have um, is, you know, is, you know, I'm, I don't want to say unmatched because forge of, of course of what they're accomplishing right now is, is tremendous as well but when you think about you know in midfield you know you can play young or you can play a Port, you can play bassett and you can play dixon you know you can play yeah. aparicio there's so many there that you can play and and both is the most hardly played this year because of injury and then you think about diaz and campbell and hurd and bustos and you know campbell played well without bustos on the wing you know during, during that time he was injured as well so yeah there are a ton of players that can be explosive. Now, will they be able to do that tonight? I think it's going to be tested, obviously, because CFC, as we said earlier with Justin, are massively favorite. No doubt about that. The payrolls have been discussed by many people in different formats. We don't need to get into that right now. Um, yeah. But I think they will go out, and your chat with Bustos kind of alluded to this, um, believing they can win the game, no? Yeah. Yeah, they absolutely will. And, I mean, certainly you – obviously have to say that but i do genuinely believe it with this group obviously they've done it against the the white caps already this year and played an exceptional game against that team but that was at home against against the white caps who were still juggling to two competitions or still in in their mls season they're coming here to bmo field this time against a tfc team that ha- has to win this game Right. right there it is absolutely the as we are we've already spoken about this is their season so it will be a bit of a different animal to that white caps game it's a very different situation going away from home and playing against that team but it's going to be fun and pacific are definitely up for that kind of game they're in some ways sometimes a team that you know get the best out of themselves when they're tested by right. more difficult teams to play against right and yeah i'm I'm extremely excited just to see how much they try and get out there and play on the front foot with their attack. You know, Marco Bustos cutting in on his left foot and and Josh Hurd streaming down the down the left flank. It I'm excited to see just how they come out in this game. Yeah, massive part of the game will also be Lucas McNaughton. Uh, any questions on the side down here, just please send them us. Obviously, we're just waiting for Par to join us. Busy day for him on match day, so we'll le- let you know when we can get him in. But if you've got questions in the meantime for Charlie and I, now is probably the best time to get them in. Cortex asks, is, Mo- is McNaughton available for tonight? Yes. Um, yes. Is suspension carry over into the Can Champ? Uh, no. So he is suspended for Canadian Premier League games. Um, Palmer Ducard joining us very shortly. Just finished his team meeting. They just got me a message right now. So we'll get him in as soon as we can. Um, McNaughton available for tonight. Yes, he will be playing. And a key, 
a key member of this team, the best center back, the center back that they have. Yeah. Uh, no doubt about that. Um, Nick asked, did the first year youth movement at Pacific pay off? Are there three year vets who started in 19? Charlie, I don't yeah. I think there's obviously, of course, that's happened. You know, the continuity has not been there like Forge, but yeah, it's definitely happening, right? Absolutely. I mean, Taryn Campbell is still with this team. He was in the 2019 team. Uh, Caden Chung is one of the best fullbacks in the CPL, in my opinion. And yeah, and he's still part of this group. Um, obviously, you mentioned Baldissimo, who hasn't maybe had the impact he's wanted to this year because of injury, but we know how good a player he is as well. Yep. There are lots of teams. <laughs> and I think Pa has, has just come into the, the chat here. He's doing a bit of a dance, but yeah, that's we awesome. So we're excited to excited to speak to him. But yes, the answer to, to Nick's question is absolutely yes. I mean, even there are players at other elsewhere in the CPL, you know, Noah Verhoeven, Zach Verhoeven, yep. who were part of that youth that's movement right. in year one. Yeah, are, are still making a name for themselves. And you mentioned it. Players like Chung and Campbell have been legit top stars in this league this year. You know, yeah. you know, you do your list of top twenty, top twenty-five players in this league. They're they're in there. You know, Chung's been one of the best right backs in the league all season. Campbell's got his goals as well. Um, so yeah, fantastic to see these young players come through at Pacific and shining under Palmer Ducar. Uh, let's throw him in. I think he's here. Um, busy day for the man himself, and we cannot thank him enough for spending five to ten minutes with us. Uh, Palmer Ducar just off a team meeting. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Pleasure to see you all. I'm doing well. It's a great day. Obviously, yeah. The plan, so. yeah. Thanks for joining us. It is a massive day. Live show on here. We just had Justin Morrow on. We're going to get Carl Becker on in a second as well. Um, a massive day for you. Well, huh? Yeah. So we got we three guys, well, three yes, guests on. Busy day. Yes, one yeah. day man. We were watching the game here, man. It was it was it was a great day for the CPL. The, 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 showing the growth of the cpl and it shows uh it's, it's great to be able to have a team in the Concacaf, you know champions league it's, it's it will help the league definitely man congrats to Fords, they were brilliant bobby has done a wonderful job yeah no Absolutely. no doubt about it it was a fantastic night does it inspire you par to go out there and and, and do something similar tonight under your group no, hundred percent. No, it's not even about me. It's about the boys, and I think uh, this, this, and like, a, like, like we spoke about this, this, this is not a moment of now. This is the moment that has been building throughout their wise, right? Why did I become a football player? You become a football player for moments like this, and and to be in the moments like this, and these are years of preparation, years of hard work that they put themselves through to get to this position. And when you're in this position, you gotta believe, you know, and you gotta have that fearless mentality. And hard, you know, to go out there and you know and perform. And we we, we know we're not gonna back down or be differently just because we play in TFC. You know, like I told my boys, you know, it's ninety minutes football and the only one team can go through. So make sure that you're the team. Yeah. Pacific certainly have an opportunity tonight to take this from what's already a special week for the CPL and make it even more special. Uh Pi, you guys Got into Toronto a little earlier this week. I think you've been there for a couple of days now, just just getting ready for this massive game. Can you just maybe take us inside what what these couple of days have been like for you guys? What the the vibe is around the team right now? Because I'm sure everybody's extremely excited for tonight. Well, excitement is the word. Is 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 nothing else for us. It's 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 what we've been doing, right? And that's what I've said. It's it's for the external and everything around it it is the biggest game for our club history in the, in these three years that we we've been in the cpl and having a run to the semi-finals because normally these positions are only reserved for the mls teams but for us it's nothing changes we are who we are we know who we are and we're just going to continue being us there's no reason to try to invent any new wheels just because we're facing toronto you know you got to respect them but when the game starts we there to win a football game, you know, and um, that's 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 all matters to the boys. You know, they're excited, and it's a great test because they want to be in this position. They have all their life is all right. Do I have? Do can I measure myself? This is the greatest measuring stick that you want players to have because this will show us where, how far our club has come, how far the CPL has the CPL has come to see. You to call, you know, to kind of see the growth in the CPL and the MLS. So this is a great opportunity for ma most of the boys that inspire to go higher up. You, it, it doesn't get better than this, right? You play in you play in the most successful club in Canada, right? And that is for you now to showcase. And everybody's going to see the game. So now, can you show what you're capable of doing? These are the things that I tell them. I'm like, this 
nothing can replicate that. Once you step on the pitch, it's your day to enjoy it. Make sure that you enjoy it. Make sure that you play to your maximum level. Because that's all it is. It's nothing else. It's If you strip everything, it's 22 players in a ball. That's all it is. Paul, you talk about playing to your maximum level there. Obviously, the components of any coach at any level is to instill belief in players. How did the belief of your players change when they beat the Whitecaps? Was there a switch in mentality? Was there a significant difference in terms of believing in their own abilities once they were able to win a game like that? Well, obviously, you do You do get that confidence. You get that, uh, okay, we've, okay we, we've done it. And, and, it's, and it's not, like what I always say, it's not a fluke. Uh, you didn't beat them by fluke. Mm -hmm. We beat them uh, convincingly. That's 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 for me is the most important thing. It's not like people can say, oh, or have excuses. There's no excuse. They played their best lineup, and so when you beat a team that has their best lineup, you beat them. You beat them fair and square. There's no ifs. There's no but. That's that's like skill. So you don't want also people to say, ah, you know, have that feeling that oh, they didn't put up their front. So when players have that and they beat the fair team, that confidence grow. And now you take it to understand that, oh, so we capable of doing that, All right? That is the more thing that's for me, it's more about, we know our capabilities, but unless you are put in a situation to actually showcase that, you can always believe in something, but when you do it in the moment, that, that belief grows stronger. That's why we say trust the process, right? I told them trust the process because today's generation want it quickly. But if you want something, you also have to understand the value of it. And the value of it is what you go through, the hardship of what you go through to understand that. And they've done it. They had to grind. Some of them were let go by the white caps, And they turned out to play against against the white caps and showcase that they're capable of doing that, right, when they've been counted out. So are some of the boys tonight. They've been counted out by TFC. So there's an extra motivation for them to go on the pitch and prove something. Right, so that's how football works. Right, what goes around comes around, and these are the moments that they they should enjoy. Yeah, and you know, for anybody who's not aware, there are, as you mentioned, players on Pacific who have connections in their past with TFC. I'm thinking of Manny Aparicio and and Kunle Dadaluk. But Pa, you, know, Luke you is, mentioned Luke is Jordan, Luke Jordan Hines, not, yeah. me. It's it's a Boscovich. Right, we got yeah. five 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 players that have that have gone through the academy. Right, and yeah, and. They're here now. They were not good enough. They not. They were not good enough, maybe to make the first team. That's why CPL is very important, mm -hmm. right? Because all these players could have been lost or gone under the radar, but in fact, they're in the biggest stage because also of the CPL. So that's the other part that people have to understand why this league is very important for the domestic young players that are not getting opportunities in the three or the biggest club in Canada, right? And what players, young players need is minutes. It's not contracts, it's minutes. Yeah, yeah. All right, people look at the money, but you can get the money for three years and zero games, but after that, where can you go? Right, so for young players, start to think about your development is getting minutes. Play the game to gain experience because you gain, you gain experience through the minutes of you playing. And then eventually, if you're good enough, later on, you're going to get paid. It's the simple equation of, of it for me. Know that you need to earn what you want to get. Absolutely. And I mean, for these for these young players, obviously, no career is, is made or broken by one game, right? But no. there's still there's still these measuring stick games, right, against these MLS teams. And oh, yeah. you never you never know who's watching these games. And they are kind of a chance for these young players to prove themselves, right? After after they've had all these minutes played, they come into these bigger games. And this is where they want to show what all the work's been for, right? 100%, Charlie. It's, 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 it's not only the games. Some, sometimes people can scout you in training. You don't know who's watching. Yeah. Right, so that's why I also tell them. I'm like, it's not only the game people are watching you or doing. If you say who you are, is when actually people are not watching. That's when you do your best work. Your best work is never done when people are watching. When people are watching, that is the final. This the fans, all these people, they see the the Saturday, they see the Sundays. But from Monday to Friday, what you do and where you put yourself, come Saturday, you will perform. But if you don't do it, you're not going to perform. It's just like in life. 
you can't just all of a sudden just don't know how to drive and put yourself in the car and drive because you're going to crash and kill somebody <laughs> you know yeah. that is life you know and that happens in the game so if you want to take an opportunity make sure that you put yourself in the best shape in your life best shape mental to be ready when the chance come because to your point this might only be the one game it might be the one game that for some of them might ever play in or even be coaching i don't know that's the reality right. of it so also yeah. for me my, i gotta enjoy it here's the truth who yeah. says that i might go and see another semi-finals <laughs> With, mm -hmm. Last question for you, Pa, and I know it's a busy day for you, um, and you, you will enjoy it, but what will be the approach be tonight, sending out your players on that pitch at BMO Field, and win, lose, or draw, what will please you tonight? That we played our game. That's the most important thing to me. We play the game that we know to play our way. That's the only thing that will always please me. Good we enough answer this. for us. Good enough answer for us. Hey, listen, I know you came away from a team meeting to join us. It's game day. It's a busy day. Um, it's always a pleasure to see a smile on your face and for you to spend some time with us. You're a, a true pioneer and we're a massive fan of yours and a big fan of everything that's happening in Pacific as well. Good luck tonight. We'll see you at the stadium. And thanks yeah. for spending some time with us and our viewers today. Thank you very much. Charlie, change the scenery, man. Yesterday was a better one. <laughs> I was on the couch yesterday. I had a little painting behind me. It was probably better. All right, well, thank you, KJ. See you guys thank soon. Thank you, Pa. Great to see you. Thanks, Thanks the, the, the inspirational man himself, Palmer Ducar, on what is going to be a great night for the Canadian Premier League tonight as they go up against Toronto FC. Talking about great nights, um, what about last night? Let's get our next guest in here who's been patiently sitting back watching a little bit of par. He was a little bit late. So, we, again, I can't thank Kyle Becker enough for being patient, uh, but he is Mr. Patience himself in that brilliant Forge FC midfield. Uh, the captain himself, uh, Kyle, uh, the day after the night before, how are you feeling after last night? Not too bad. A little tired. A little tired? Yeah, little I can tired. imagine. The amount, the, amount of, <laughs> the amount of uh yards you've been running lately and the amount of games have been coming thick and fast. But um how was that last night for you as a as a leader of that team to go out there and accomplish something so special? Yeah, I mean that's it. It was special. It was uh obviously that was the goal. That's what we set out to do. But it was uh I think when you say that it's easier said than done. But the the performance from all the boys was incredible. I think from that that first minute kickoff, we we kind of felt something special. We knew we were up for it, and luckily, we just kind of stuck to it. And once we got that first goal, we uh, we definitely felt really confident. This whole Concacaf League experience is—I I know it's meant a lot to you guys as a club over the I think three I guess three years now that you've been playing in it. And I know last year you guys came so close to that Champions League qualification, and. and Bobby was talking last night about how, you know, that did hurt last year and you guys really wanted to come back in with a vengeance this year. Just how much did it mean to you guys just to to get over that hump, to to achieve that goal? Obviously, you've got plenty more on the table, but just did you take a moment to think about what that really meant to you guys? Yeah, I mean, listen, each year we've been in this competition, we've tried to just push the envelope a little further, continue to grow, keep getting better, trying to get those new bounds. And and that's what we've done and obviously last year was harsh it's a tough way to lose obviously it was a little bit of a, a bizarre situation but those things happen in the game and, and we're all aware of it but again it, it leaves a little bit of a bitter taste in your mouth so going into this game we knew we were up against it we knew we had those two goals but we knew we weren't willing to be done in this competition yet and to be able to, to continue on just uh, to be able to continue to make history for our club for this league and, and continue to put Canada on the map it's it's truly special and obviously us at Forge are very happy that we're the we're the ones doing it yeah we're very happy for you to do it as well fittingly um Kyle early in the show we had Justin Morrow on and obviously he's coming to the end of his career and a big night for him tonight and he was talking about uh, what he'll miss the most about his career is the teammates and being there with them in those big nights and obviously there's been a core group of players at Toronto FC that accomplished so much on the CONCACAF level and domestically as well, similar to what you're doing now, a core group as well. Um, how special is that bond that when you're going through that difficult 15 minutes in Honduras or in Costa Rica or wherever you're taken, that you look next to you and you've got, you know, Cissé or Alex or Daniel behind you, you've been there together, that you know you've got each other's back? It's incredible. I mean, that's that's really the essence of being a part of a team. I mean, this is something that's going to keep us together. It's going to be a, a bond that we have for the rest of our lives. When we look back on our careers, these are the moments that you're always going to cherish. 
they're special games obviously with the the crowd the atmosphere a nice cold night in uh, in hamilton it, it just makes it a little bit more special and there's something about kind of going into a game with your with your back against the wall and and when you come out on the other side it just makes it that much more special so it's uh it's unbelievable that we've had a few of these to look back on now but the f the fact is we got a, a solid group now that's had three years of of just making history for forge and and as you said these nights are special and that's what keeps guys together it's it keeps a team uh keeps a team together it allows us to build on that chemistry and and these are the moments that we could kind of look back on when when you're up against it and throughout the course of the season i think that's something that we've we've used even this year just quickly before we get back into the the depth of the the moment and and how much this means i want to pull <laughs> pull a lighter question from the chat here from from jeffrey who asks who had the better golazo last night? Was it Omar or Mo? I think you have to give it to Omar, man. He had no business hitting that first time, and he just hit it so sweet. It was it was unbelievable. That's a good one. I, uh, it's uh, it's it's not the kind of goal you see very often scored on Canadian soil, is it? Let's be honest. Uh, it's a pretty 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 remarkable goal. Um, lots of love for you in the chat here. Great comments from many people. Hello from uh, Argentina. Uh, Nick wanted to ask us ask you about Bobby. Uh, and I know you'll never stop talking about Bobby because uh, you love doing about that. But what makes Bobby Sminiota so special? And I think we need to give him more love, right? This is a guy that has just been, you know, been the orchestrator of really what has been a fantastic, um, really, dynasty now developing with Forge. What is it about him that makes him so special? And maybe a couple of things that you know that nobody else really knows about this man. I mean, something as simple as just his, his tactical genius. I mean, the fact that we were able to switch how we went about the, about ourselves from, from the first game to the second leg. I mean, we changed something so simple as dropping myself back a little further with Alex when we were defending just to cut off those wide, those half spaces and just stop those two guys from getting getting the ball. And I think that just changed everything. Uh, we stopped their counterattack. They're so dynamic when they go forward. They throw a ton of numbers forward. But if we, we kind of block that first pass, then we kind of just cut them off where right right at the start. And I think that little thing, I think we tried it out in Montreal. We were very successful. It was another thing that allowed us to to have success in that game. And and then on that, it, it kind of brings Mo into that half space when we have the ball. And Borges has been fantastic in those last two games as well. And and that's just something so small as that that little tinker. It just shows his his tactical genius, and that's just uh, I think what separates him from everyone else in the league. Yeah, it's been really fascinating watching the way that you guys have you know adapted to different teams because obviously Montreal and Santos are quite different in the way that you play, but you found ways to to get at them. Uh, Kyle, I, I know that we've we've alluded to it a few times here, but I want to get into what it means to qualify for the CONCACAF Champions League here, right? Because I'm not sure everybody everybody understands what this competition is. You know, that there are teams in the draw that you're going into, like Cruz Azul, who play at a certain Estadio Azteca that we've talked about a lot uh, recently. Just what does this mean, you know, for a club and for the players who get to now be part of this experience? Yeah, I think it's it's one of those ones that probably hasn't even set in yet. I mean, it's it's kind of funny. You just smile and laugh when when you mention it just now. It's it's bizarre. I mean, there's a chance Forge is going to be playing in the Azteca. That's unbelievable. Yeah. I think what we've what we've been able to achieve is 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 literally nothing short of of incredible. But it's a, a testament to to the group we have, the staff we have, everyone's buy-in since day one, and just kind of continuing to to push the push the bounds. We've been so demanding of each other, on and off the field, and everything we're doing is is just starting to pay off. But it's it takes a lot of work it takes a lot of effort a lot of buy-in and and everyone's been locked in since since day one but i don't know if we'll if we'll fully grasp how special this is and until maybe that first round when we're going up against who, whoever we draw but it's uh it's pretty incredible you talk about incredible what else is incredible is the run that you guys have been on all season it seems like you're playing a game every three days you don't have an enormous squad like some of these clubs in europe who complain about playing every three days they can literally rotate as many as 30 players if they want um you know i went to the game on saturday to watch you and i was wondering if it was going to be a complete change and no here we go again becca's out there in midfield again playing just keep right just keep sending you out how are you doing physically as a group do you check in with each other and and what's it like being part of this leadership process in terms of knowing that the game can be quite mentally grinding, right? Do you look for the younger players to get them a boost? Because there's a couple of these players, you know, I'm thinking of Matusla and others, who've been tremendous for you, but it's their first ride at this. Yeah. I mean, they've been thrown into it. It's 
it's absolutely unbelievable what we're doing. Like the schedule is just ridiculous. And then obviously you add in all the travel that we've had to do. I mean, we kind of just take it, uh, take it on the chin and keep going. But we've heard other guys in the league complain about a busy schedule, and it's like, come on, man, look what we're doing. So <laughs> I think it's, it's honestly, it's become a, a point of pride for us. Really, it's obviously it's been a crazy year and a half, two years, and and I think last year you're looking at it and, and we were upset that we only had a, a guaranteed eight games or whatever the bubble was, and then we wanted to continue that CONCACAF run as, as much as we could because we got a young group. We got guys who want to play games. They want to showcase themselves. They want to give themselves the best opportunity to go on and do do whatever they can in their career, and now we're in it. We're playing games. I've said it all year long. I'd rather play games than train any day, so can't complain now, can I? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, as, as you mentioned, not only are you guys playing almost every three days at the moment, some of those games you've been playing has been in like El Salvador and Panama and, and Costa Rica, which is a lot farther away than Ottawa, right? But anyway, you know, just we're we're kind of down at, at the the business end of this season here, right? It's been a long one. It's been a challenging one for, for everybody. Just But you guys have kept yourselves in such a good position, even in the league, despite managing other competitions just how confident are you guys feeling just heading into these last few games you still have a pretty good chance at finishing first in the cpl despite you know everything that has happened and how difficult it's been just i i don't i don't, I don't really know how to phrase this but what is this this little next month going to be like for you guys yeah i think it's just staying on the same path that we've been on I mean, you said it. It's been a it's been a crazy season. We've had tons of injuries. We've had guys who've had to step up, play out of position, play big, big minutes when when realistically they should be in a rest. But guys have just taken it, taken it in stride and and stepped up. And we've had a a, a number of guys who've, who've kind of been thrown into it and, and they've risen to the challenge. And that's been something that we've leaned on throughout this entire process. I mean, obviously. Any, anyone on the team is going to want to play every single minute. And that's just the reality is, is it might not happen. It, it, you never know when it's going to happen, if it's at the beginning of the season, if it's the end of the season. But if you continue to do the right things, you'll get that chance. And, and that's a testament to the guys who, who've done that over the course of the season. So when Bobby calls their name, they're off for the challenge and, and they get the job done. Some of them have played themselves into the team. Some of them have, have been consistently doing what, they, what they've been asked. And, and that's really been the, the success. And then I think going into this last month, it's, it's really just these last two weeks that have, I think, kind of solidified our, our mentality. I mean, our, that first leg in, in Santos, obviously, we came away with it with a, a little upset. We felt we should have played a little better. We felt we got a little undisciplined at times. But then coming in and playing that Montreal game, it was like, all right, we're we're on to something. We got guys who are who have ability and we're capable of playing in these big matches again. And I think that kind of just reassured us and it came at a perfect time. And I mean we've just, just kind of kept building on top of that. And if we can keep that momentum going, it's it's gonna be a, a solid month. We just know how important it is to play at home. And that's the goal. So we want to make sure that we can try and get that, that top spot so we have that home field advantage. Kyle, just a couple more. And again, thanks so much for your time. You just mentioned something there that I thought was really important. You said that Montreal game, and you talked about it as a positive, uh, even though you got knocked out. And you should, by the way. I was there watching you. I saw the body language afterwards. You guys were brilliant that night, but you didn't get the outcome in the end of what you wanted. Is that a lesson to other teams out there watching? And it's something that your mature group knows that you trust the process, that sometimes the games don't go the way you want in terms of the result, but you play the way you need to play and it's just going to help you going forward because there's nothing other than the outcome and penalties that you really did wrong in that night. Yeah, I mean, obviously penalties is a harsh way harsh way to lose any time. But I mean, and you look at the circumstances of it, 11, the 11th shooter, it was goalie versus goalie. And again, you just kind of sit back and you laugh about it. But walking off that field, no one should have had their head down we all should have been proud of what we did. We came out, we proved to everyone that we can play in that at that level. And I think that was the biggest takeaway that we had. It wasn't something like we walked into the room and and we kind of knew within, we're like, oh, if, if we did a little, a few things better, it, it would have been a better result. I think it was blatantly obvious that we were the better team in that game to anyone who was watching or anyone who knows anything about football. That's not not to take anything away from Montreal. It was a fantastic game, but we were just on the front foot since, since the first minute. And it was it was positive. I mean, that's something that you can build on. And I think everyone had that appropriate response and no one was sitting there feeling sorry for themselves. We all kind of laughed it off in the locker room after. G didn't even know he was supposed to take a PK. It was it was just hilarious. Like there's there's so many things that we could take from that. And and that's what we've done. And and I, credit to the boys. No one put their head down. Everyone got on with it. Everyone took the positives and it showed against uh 
Halifax on the weekend, and then we took it into to last night as well. Yeah, yeah the Montreal game was a, a special night, and as you said, and I think you've you've set yourselves up now for a couple more potential special nights at Tim Hortons Field, right? And you are going to get a little bit busier, even in the CPO playoffs with this Concacaf League semifinal coming up. But you know, you guys, you guys have a, a shot at two trophies <laughs> over the next month and a half, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. Obviously, it's a, uh, it's an exciting time to to be a part of this team and 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 in this league, and and we have a big month ahead of us. No one's gonna get a uh, get too far uh, ahead of themselves, and obviously think too far down the line. We know we have a massive game uh, on Saturday against a great opponent who's, who's who are real hot right now, and and they've been playing for something. They're trying to get in that playoffs. They're trying to secure their spot. So, it's a these are these are the games that are kind of dangerous. So we got to shift our mentality quick and and refocus, and and can't be thinking about the past. Uh, when we uh, when we show up on Saturday against York, on this run in, you get to go to Edmonton. Uh, many of us will be out there, very similar to when the Canadians, the national team, will be out there. You're going to get to go to that game. Uh, what are you, what are your thoughts on that and, and the overall program right now in a big game against Costa Rica when you'll be out there? Yeah, I think they they play the night before us, right? Yeah, they do. Yeah. So um, obviously, it depends on on when we fly out there. Who knows what the what the schedule is yet? I haven't looked that far in advance, but I mean, if we could see them, that'd be fantastic. I think it would be a great experience for a ton of the boys on the team if we could get out there the night before. But obviously, we still have a job to do when we're out there. Yeah, no doubt about it. Quick question from the chat before we let you go, uh, and I know you're going to want like enjoying answering this one from Aaron, big Forge fan. Uh, how much does this mean for David Edgar after the hype, heartbreaking uh, moments of last season to go out and do that what you did last night? Yeah, I think uh, I think he's happy, man. We were speaking after the game and and just the the way we went about our business. He was so happy and he was so proud of the boys. Obviously, it, it would be fantastic for him to be playing, but he's he's relished his role and uh, on the coaching staff. He's continuing to to learn and grow as uh, in this next part of his career. And he's been another person who's been fantastic for us throughout the season. I think he's someone that that we can lean on. He has a massive. Uh, a massive weight in the locker room so when he's when he's firing we're all we're all kind of feeding off his energy and that's just kind of the special kind of guy he is and, and he brings so much experience to us both when he was playing and now when he's when he's a member of the staff so i think he's a he's a massive asset to us yeah massive asset to you and uh, you guys are a massive asset to canadian soccer this has just been an unbelievable year in all regards and uh we cannot thank you uh for the part that you're playing in it it's a mon it's a, a monumental story we just can't keep talking about it enough so again thanks for spending some time on very short notice after a late night last night on this kyle uh a true pleasure to chat with you again keep up the great work and we'll, we'll catch up soon thanks for having me guys appreciate it Always appreciate the time. Uh, the excellent Kyle Becker. And, and wow, Absolutely. what a leader uh, on and off the pitch he's become, Charlie. Just uh, when you watch him live, you know, there's some questions in there about playing as a six, playing as an eight. And I know, you know, what's his favorite. And he said in the past, he's not a big fan of playing as a six. He prefers playing further forward. But uh, just yeah. the way he dictates this team, um, he's just he wears the armband as a captain, but he is the tactical leader. He's the coach on the pitch yeah. that this team needs as well. He talks about the versatility that Bobby Smyniotis brings. He has the intelligence to be able to put that plan in place for the players on the pitch. Yeah, no, he absolutely does. And you can always see, especially if you go to watch Forge live in person, you can see what Kyle Becker is doing all the time, pointing at players, yelling at guys. He just knows where everybody should be. And just even at an individual level, he is really never let them down he's always stepped up really when they've needed him he scored some incredible goals for this team he's always been that presence in midfield just you can't say enough about what an important part of this incredible squad kyle is yeah no doubt about it uh great to see so much love for everybody in the chat again thanks so much to justin morrow palmer Ducar on game day really special guys to get that kind of uh availability and to talk to all of us about that today again a reminder live from seven o'clock on one soccer tonight if you're not down at the stadium kickoff just after 7 30 uh from bmo field toronto fc taking on pacific fc in the semi-finals of the canadian championship a date with cf montreal in the final uh for the winner and again and a massive thank you to uh, Kyle Becker, the Forge FC captain, after a truly monumental night last night. Uh, thanks to everybody uh, with all the comments. Appreciate it. And appreciate the love for Benedict Rhodes as well. And uh, <laughs> great to see the man himself, the weatherman, Adam Jenkins, in the chat after doing uh, a wonderful job last night in narrating a key moment in Canadian soccer history. Charlie, again, thanks for your time for this. Marty Thompson, as usual, the man and the genius behind the scenes, putting all this together. Thanks for both of those guys. They'll be down at BMO Field tonight. 
as will I. Uh, continue, everybody. Uh, be safe out there. Take care of each other. Enjoy the games. Uh, Charlie, thanks again for this, man. Yeah, thank you. It's always been a pleasure doing these things. Yeah, it's a great time. Thanks, everybody. Thanks to Julian. Thanks to Aaron, Jeffrey, uh, everybody in the chat. Appreciate it. And for everybody watching live on YouTube and Twitter as well. Enjoy the games. Take care of everybody. And we'll see you soon.